Are you thinking of moving to the Seattle area, but you want to know some of the negatives of what it's like to live here? Well, stay tuned because this video, I'm going to give you the top five negatives of living in Seattle, Washington. Everybody. My name is Tova Williamson and I am a local realtor here in the Seattle metropolitan area and I shoot tons of videos of what it's like to live in Seattle and what it's like to move here. Um, so if those are more videos that you want to watch, go ahead and click the subscribe button and don't forget to click that bell so that you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. We honestly get reach outs every single day from people that are wanting to move here and we love hearing from you guys, but we can't help unless you reach out. So give us a call, email, text, whatever you got to do because we got your back when you're moving to Seattle. Okay, so today in this video, I'm going to talk about the top five negatives of living in Seattle, Washington. So, you know, you always hear about the good and the bad. Every area has got its good things and its bad things. Um, so these, we're going to talk about some of the bad things of living in Seattle. So number one is weather. I'm sure you've heard it all before. It rains here a lot. It's gray a lot. Um, so you just, it's something you got to get used to. Um, I've mentioned before, like getting a sun lamp, if you think that like seasonal affective disorder is something that might affect you when you move here, getting something like that, like just getting out in the weather and exercising can help kind of like keep that like negative feeling of the weather away, but it definitely is gray here. It's just something you got to just be prepared for and deal with. Um, Seattle gets about 150 days of rain a year. So definitely rains a lot. A lot of times it is a drizzle. It's not like a full blown downpour. So you can kind of get away with just using like a hood or some rain boots, not necessarily need like a full on umbrella, but it is rainy here a lot. And even a lot of times if it's not raining, it's still like really cloudy and gray um, just because of the way we sit geographically. We have mountains like on all sides of us. So when the weather moves in, it just kind of like sits in this like depression of Seattle, literally depression of Seattle um, for a long time. And so then it can like blow through and then you get some sun for a little bit, but rain is definitely a thing here. Gray is definitely a thing here. So it's just something to like mentally prepare yourself for. It's going to rain a lot. It's going to be gray a lot, but focus on the greenery around because without that rain, it would not be so green and lush here. We wouldn't have like these amazing rainforests out on the peninsula. Like it is, it does have beauty. So you just have to like find the good in it. Um, Seattle is called the Emerald City and it's because it's so green and it's because it rains. So prepare yourself. It's going to rain. You just got to like deal with it. Number two is traffic. Seattle is notoriously bad for traffic. Um, the way that the city is set up is it's a coastal city, basically. I mean, not necessarily on the coast, but there's a lot of water here. So um, just looking at the map, I mean, Seattle's got water here, here. You got lakes here. You got like these rivers and cuts that come in. And so it just like really makes the roads really hard to like navigate and build. They're not just like full on grids that go like Northeast Southwest. Like you have these like wild, like curving winding roads and then they turn into one ways for certain parts of the day. And then sometimes during the day it turns into parking, street parking, one lane, like you're driving and all of a sudden a car is parked there. So it just like really makes like it a total cluster bleep to drive around here um and pair that with the fact that we really only have like one freeway that runs throughout the city it just makes for like a straight up nightmare getting around especially i mean if there's like even one fender bender on the freeway like just forget it it like destroys your commute for that day. Like it will just take hours to get anywhere. And it's really hard to get off on the freeway to be like, oh, I'll take the surface streets, forget the freeway. Well, I mean, like, look at these streets. Like it's so hard to get around. Um, you think that you can do that. And then you're in these like crazy, tiny little like side streets and only one car can go down at a time. Like, so it's not always faster. Like sometimes you just got to like suck it up and sit on the freeway or just like pull over and like go to happy hour and wait for it to die down or like catch a bus or something because um, it can be pretty bad so 
that coupled with like road work, this like constantly happening at certain parts of the city um, and certain suburbs of the city. I mean, like Tacoma area, if you're living down there, like anybody who knows Tacoma's road work has been going on for, I mean, like forever. Like, I don't know if it'll ever be done, but it's just like, it's so bad down there. It's always constant. It doesn't matter what time of day you drive in Tacoma, you're going to hit traffic. So it's just kind of a reality in this area. The public transportation is okay. It's not amazing. So, you know, it doesn't really alleviate a lot of the traffic. The light rail is coming. It's going up north. It's going south. Um, so that hopefully maybe will reduce some traffic, but I wouldn't count on it. It's still going to be pretty bad. One thing too to note with the traffic is not only road work, but then there's a lot of construction just in general going on in Seattle. Like new buildings are going up. There's tons of cranes that you see in the skyline of Seattle. And so when they're like building new skyscrapers in an area, they like block off that part of the road because they can't have like heavy machinery like coming into the street when cars are driving by so you just get it's just like this perfect storm of all of these like really inconvenient things that makes traffic just like pretty bad so if you can work from home and you don't have to commute or if you can like live where you work and you don't have to deal with that as much definitely do that because traffic here is just like bad and it's only getting worse i mean the more people that move here it's only going to get worse um so that's just something to prepare for that's like a big negative in the area number three is seattle has a pretty large homeless population um it's one of the i think it's like in the top three for the country for homeless population. Um, so it's just, it's a really unfortunate problem. It's only gotten worse since I've lived here. I've been here like 12 years now. And I mean, it's just gotten worse. The more people that move here, the housing prices are going up, more people are being displaced. Um, you just see a lot of homeless people, especially in the downtown area. There's homeless encampments all over. Um, drug use is pretty like prevalent in those homeless camps. Some violence happens in those homeless er encampments. So it's pretty rough. It's a really complex and like big issue that needs to be dealt with doesn't really seem like much is happening with it. Um, it's just really hard. I don't think there's any one solution to it, but it's just something to prepare yourself for, especially if you're moving here somewhere that's like not a city and you're not used to seeing homeless people could be in for like a pretty big shock when you come here um, because you will see that, especially downtown. Um, so I'd say if that's something that you want to avoid and not have to like deal with moving to the suburbs where you do see less homeless people, um, in the area. Seattle did just recently elect a new mayor. So whether or not, you know, the new mayor is going to make any changes or do anything to help remains to be seen, but it is definitely something that affects our area. And it's just a really unfortunate problem. Number four is cost of living. So this area is pretty expensive. In 2019, Seattle ranked as the fifth most expensive city in the country. So it's definitely, you know, prices are up there, especially with housing rents and like home purchase prices are very expensive. Seattle's median sales price for um, April of 2022 was 957,000. So you're looking at about a million dollars for a home here. And that's just like a regular like little house. It's not like some massive like mansion that you would like think maybe a million dollars would get you. It gets you like a pretty standard like two, three bedroom, one and three quarter bath house that's like 1800 square feet. Um, so it's, you know, and you're not like gonna have water views or anything just in maybe a desirable neighborhood. So definitely the cost of living is more expensive. I mean, I think some of the other things like electricity, internet, some of those like utility type of things are probably more comparable to other larger cities, not necessarily that much more expensive, but housing definitely like takes the cake for it. Um, groceries, I think too, tend to be more expensive here. Um, people really like their like fancy organic like grocery stores. So prices tend to be a little bit higher in that area as well. Um, there's not sales tax here. So you get a break on sales tax on your groceries. Doesn't really like equate to much, but it does, you know, that is something to consider. Also, um, the median income here is higher, like the cost of living is higher. So the median income here is quite a bit higher than other areas. Um, it's still 
you know, sometimes like not enough to pay for a million dollar home, but the minimum wage is $15 an hour in Seattle proper. So definitely, you know, you get paid a little bit more here. There's a lot of like tech companies and high paying tech jobs. So that just brings people with money here and they can afford to spend the money on some of these more expensive houses. So um, it still just gets more and more expensive in this area. So that's something to consider if you're moving here um, and you get a good job and you're like, wow, that's a lot of money. Like think about it in terms of housing too, because sometimes it's like, well, it might not balance out as much. Like you're still not like you're going to be living in some mansion just because you're making $150,000 a year. So cost of living is definitely high here. So just prepare yourself for that. And the number five negative in the area is just kind of the general lack of diversity. Seattle is not the most diverse city, especially for like a large city. Um, it's mostly predominantly white based on the 2020 census. Um, it's about 59, 60% white. So still, especially if you're moving from some other areas, maybe that had a little bit more diversity, you might be a little like shocked by just the lack of it here. It is changing. It is getting more diverse as more people move here. So we are seeing that shift, but it's still definitely like a mostly white area. Um, in the 2020 census, it's rated, um, there was about 16.9% Asian, 8.2% Hispanic or Latino, 6.8% Black African American, and then 7.3%, which is two or more races. So still definitely more white people here than any other um, ethnicity. Um, but that is changing. Back in 1960, it was 91% white. So we are seeing a shift. We are getting more diverse people here. Um, so if that's something that you're looking at, like don't let that stop you, especially if you're a more diverse person yourself, like we need that diversity. So, you know, come and like help make it more diverse. So that's sometimes I think just a shock for people or just like a negative. It's just like, oh, it's not very diverse. So um, it's getting there, but definitely can be seen as a negative. So there you have it. Those are kind of the top five negatives in the Seattle area. So moving to Seattle or a new city can be really hard, especially when you don't know the areas and when you're trying to figure out where you want to live. So that's what we're here for. We're here to help. We love hearing from you guys, but you got to give us a call. We can't help unless you call. So call, email, text, and we'd love to hear from you. We've got your back when you're moving to Seattle.